Hello everybody, in this episode we're going to be talking about how to make an electrical connection such as with this Romex wire here. Now, I thought these movies were supposed to be about plumbing. Well, as a plumber, every now and again you're going to have to. This tankless water heater, a lot of times we're responsible for making that electrical connection. And some of them come with little controllers and you'll have to wire these up too. Or maybe a well. Uh, every now and again you might have to put together one of these little pressure switches and it has wire connections inside of this too. Or maybe you've got to install a garbage disposal. Now some of them come with the plug already attached but some models don't have it. And you have to get a little kit to wire it up. Now these are pretty neat because it comes with your wire nuts and your little uh, plug clamp there to hold it all together conventional water heaters, the big old tank water heaters, the electric ones, they've got to be wired up. Every now and again you might have one that has a bad element in it and you got to wire that up too or replace the thermostat. So there's a lot of things in plumbing that you have to wire up. Alright now let's actually wire something up. <clears throat> this is just your regular old conventional style water heater. Now we do a lot of new construction and we do do some service. Uh, most of the time on a service call you're going to be pulling an old unit out and replacing a new unit. So your wire is going to kind of already be here. In new construction your electrician is going to do this and uh, most of the time you'll find the wire just hanging there like this with some wire nuts on it or it's in a blue box and you have to take that blue box off. Um, but typically you're going to have a wire here. You're not going to be pulling wire. You're not an electrician. You're a plumber. But most of the time it is going to be your responsibility. Well, you're going to need some tools, so uh, I've got an assortment of stuff here. Normally, I just use my little needle nose pliers with the wire cutter in it, and that seems to do pretty much everything uh, that I need. And then you're going to want a screwdriver, but if you want to get fancy, you can get some of these uh, wire strippers. If you're doing it a lot, you might want a dedicated wire stripping tool uh, because these are designed for it. Uh, the next thing you might need is just your regular old uh, razor knife of some kind because you might have to cut back this uh, housing. Now when you're cutting this plastic stuff off of here, this outer housing, be really careful that you don't nick the white or black coating on the inside. If you cut it straight down the middle, you're going to be on that copper wire and you can cut that up as much as you want to because that's just your earth ground. Um, all right, so the first thing you would need to do is get your, get your screwdriver. It's always nice to have one of these uh, six-in-one screwdrivers uh, because it'll go right down here on these screws. Now, I did go ahead and pre-unscrew some of this stuff so you didn't spend 15, 20 minutes watching me undo it. Um, and these are kind of tight. So we're going to run this stuff out and take the plate off. Now, all your other appliances, like your dishwashers, they're going to have some kind of similar setup. And you're just going to want to fold your wires down in there, nice and pretty, nice and neat. Uh, before you mess with anything, make sure the breaker's off to this, to your water heater. It'll be labeled in the box. If it's not, turn the whole thing off. Shut the whole thing down. Uh, take your little wire nuts off. Oh, now look, see this little old electrician. He didn't strip his wires for me. He just put the caps on them and, and went on with it. So we're going to get out our little wire strippers. We're going to find the right gauge here. Uh, and it doesn't hurt to kind of give it a spin. And then you're just going to pop it. And I was on the wrong one. But if you give it a spin, it'll go ahead and cut that wire. And then it'll pop right off like that for you. And do your black wire as well. like so uh, and then you're going to want to take this plate with the hole now if you're lucky and you've got one of those special little nuts um, you can go ahead and put that little plastic plug in there or the little wire clamp plug so that this can't be pulled out but these don't really come with them and here again we're not electricians we don't really stock this stuff so we're going to go ahead and put this back down um, 
just to make this a little bit easier, we're just going to go ahead and mount this thing back together so it's not flopping around all on us. go in there a lot easier than they came out. Now, let's see if I can get this wire out of the way so you can see what I'm doing here. Uh, as you see, I got a black wire and a white wire on my Romex here and I've got a red wire and a black wire on my water heater. Always put your black with your black and your red is going to go with that white. Um, but what you're going to want to do is put those together and these wires are kind of tough so get your needle noses out. Uh, you can even use your channel locks if you wanted to but just any old plier. Give it a little twist. This just helps twist it together like that. Get your wire nut. Now this has got a little metal spring inside there and it kind of works like a uh, threads. And you'll stick it on there and you're gonna push both of them up in there tight and twist that thing down give it good good several twists to get it on there and then what I normally do is I pull on these wires I pull on that nut and I pull on that red wire I pull on that white wire to see if they'll come out if they don't come out we're good um, and then you're gonna want to um, do your black one as well now some of the guys uh, electricians and stuff, they'll just take the two wires, put them together like that, and screw that cap on, and it'll probably hold it, but, you know, I just, I always like to do it just one better, you know, just make sure that uh, you got, it's not going to go anywhere. But twist that thing on there, push both wires up in there together, and screw that thing down. Give it a couple turns, and then pull on that black wire and make sure that thing's not gonna pop off. And then we're gonna tuck them in. Now when you're doing this, here again, be careful. Um, and then your next step here, grab this little ground wire. It's gonna go under this green uh, screw. That's why it's labeled uh, green or colored green is because that's your ground screw. There is a little label here if you're into reading electrical schematics. It will tell you right there. But go ahead, bend it, use your needle nose, bend a little loop in it and push it down and under that screw. We may have to loosen our screw up a little bit here. This cause the angle we're coming at. But there it goes. Slides up under there. Give it a little pull on that. Make sure it's under there and then tighten that guy down. That is your neutral ground or your earth ground that grounds straight back out to outside to the spike in the ground. Now in the old days they used the copper plumbing system as a ground because the copper went into the ground at least 10 inches and they didn't have to put a spike in the yard. They could ground it to the plumbing system. Um, now we have a lot of poly and stuff like that. You don't see a whole lot of that but if you're ever say in an old house trying to make a repair, pay attention to that stuff. See how that house is grounded. And if it's grounded just, just to that copper line and you go in there and you cut that copper out and you put a little section of PEX, you're gonna have to make a jumper wire to put that, that uh, circuit back together. Because if lightning were to hit the house or something, it could energize those copper uh, water lines and it not have a way to get back out to the earth. I always try to make this stuff look pretty you know, people don't know plumbing, people don't know electricity, but they know straight up and down, they know crooked, they know what looks good. So just remember that. Try to keep this wire off that metal edge unless you've got one of those plastic plugs to go in there, but we typically don't. We don't keep them. But that's basically it. Uh, most of your appliances are going to be the same way. Your garbage disposals are going to have a, a little thing like this that you have to unscrew, and there's two little wires in there. Um, you're going to have to wire that up just the same way. A dishwasher's got like a little square bracket with a screw that you undo and take off. Most of your tankless water heaters also have that little cover and you'll have to take that off, put your wire nuts on. It's the same deal. There's going to be a positive, a negative, and a neutral ground wire. 
Just a quick summary on electrical wiring and being safe around electricity. Never assume that that circuit is not energized. Always assume that it is hot. Uh, before you start any kind of wiring project, go out there to that breaker box, find that breaker for that water heater, dishwasher, garbage disposal, whatever you're working on, turn it off. Don't ever assume that the electrician labeled that breaker box correctly. You're going to want to get you a voltmeter. Test that circuit before you start. Uh, if you don't know, if the electrician did not label that breaker box, shut the whole thing down. Get you a flashlight. Work in the dark. But shut that whole system down. Making, make sure you're not dealing with a live circuit. Uh, the other thing is never leave bare wires. Don't just twist something together and leave it hanging out there and oh it works and think you're going to be okay. Somebody could come along and touch that. Somebody could move something and that could bump the housing uh, creating a short circuit which could lead to a fire. Uh, 110 a lot of people think well that's not a whole lot of voltage. Uh, 110 volts of electricity can kill you. It can stop your heart. It can kill you. Never leave bare wires. Always cover it with a wire nut. Tape it if you've got to. Tape's not the best stuff in the world, but it will protect you or your coworkers or any occupant of that household from getting an electrical shock. You can also use the little butt connectors. Uh, many different options there. Even your low voltage stuff, even this little stuff. Now, yeah, this probably isn't going to shock you. probably isn't going to give you any kind of burn or electrocute you. But what this does, if you leave bare wires on these guys, you could short out your tankless water heater's motherboard or the remote control for that tankless water heater or whatever appliance it's going to. So just remember that and be safe. Uh, a few weeks back, uh, we had some guys wire up a tank water heater and they didn't put any wire nuts on the wire. They left it bare and they put that cover back on there. Uh, I got a call about 9.30. Uh, I had to go to that house at 10 o'clock at night on a Tuesday, I think it was, and I found out that they hadn't put wire nuts on the thing and those electrical wires had basically welded themselves to the side of that water heater. And every time you flip that breaker on, it would flicker all the lights and then pop that breaker. Uh, luckily, the breaker was there and it was working. Uh, sometimes when you're dealing with an older house, these breakers don't work the way they used to. So always be safe. Use your electric tape. Put a wire nut on it, butt connector, uh, or, or something like that. Uh, but just be safe out there guys. Think about what you're doing. Think about what you're working with. Uh, this stuff, like I said, can kill you.